Hey everybody, this is David at Barnyard Bees. Today we're out ramp hunting. And what could be more beautiful than a little tiny babbling brook coming off a mountain right through the middle of a ramp patch. And they're just everywhere. This is actually a spring that comes out of the side of the hill, just up a couple hundred yards up the hill there. It comes out of the side of the hill with, it comes out of a pipe actually. And it just, uh, it's as cold as can be. You can drink it coming out of the mountain. Of course this here may be okay too, I don't know. Maybe a little risky. Hey Doug, you wanna be on YouTube? <laughs> Digging ramps in North Georgia. No honeybees today, doing ramps. Hillside's covered full. Well, actually, I thought I had you filmed there, but I didn't have the button push. <laughs> there, we got it filmed again. Ramps as far as you can see, all directions. Everything you can see green is a ramp. Except Doug, he's not a ramp. <laughs> <laughs> Digging ramps in North Georgia mountains. Here's some up real close. Get a kind of idea. They kind of look like almost like rabbit ears. These are supposed to be like the spring tonic of the year. Natural remedies. There's the ramp. You can eat the, the bulb or the stem, either one. Most of them's got like that purple. I want them right there. Okay, we're still hunting and still digging. I know this is something a little off subject every now and then. I like to do videos like this, just something different. Um, I've always loved digging ramps or anything that has to do with nature or herbs or medicinal plants and stuff like that. I've always had a extreme high interest in it. And this is one of those... Uh, plants that a lot of old timers it was like a spring tonic um, it would pretty much it, it's a very pungent plant very strong so if you don't like a garlic or onion taste you wouldn't like these but I've always loved ramps and here we come across another little stream here and as you can see just as far as you can see everything that you see at green is ramps um, I used to hunt ramps 
back in my home state of West Virginia and it was nothing compared to this patch here this is a this thing is huge it goes on for who knows how long it's the biggest ramp patch I've ever seen in my life it's amazing it's just everything literally that you see that is green and this goes way up the hill up the mountain here as far as you can see and it gets thinner as you go up and thicker as you go down and it's just literally covered in these uh, ramps and I got a bag full there and I got two more bag fulls up up there and I'll actually can some of these pickle them actually and they do pretty good but uh, if you would leave in the comments anyone that's ever done this or anyone that's in medicinal plants or anything like that leave a comment uh, I always like hearing from people that are interested in stuff like that um, or if you've ever heard of them they're called ramps probably 70 percent of the people I've ever talked to have no idea what I'm talking about they're considered like a wild leek is about the best you can describe them they're a garlicky onion they have a distinct flavor of their own they're very strong very pungent um, you'll smell them for days and then once been around them if you haven't ate them you can't stand to be around them they're that strong but I guess that's why it's like a spring tonic it's supposed to cleanse your body and they're very strong so we'll keep on hunting here what's doing goosey big male goosey here's a problem with goats yeah why are you why are you out why are you out where's goosey at have you seen goosey huh goosey's missing well don't blame me i didn't take her i didn't take goosey where's she at I guess we'll have to look for it. <laughs> Everybody's hungry. Where's Goosey? Goosey is missing. I guess we'll have to go look for it. Have you seen Goosey? Huh? Lizzie the bait dog, have you seen Goosey? Tilly, have you seen Goosey? Not talking, huh? Well, I guess we'll look for her. Oh, there's Goosey. Goosey is on the nest. Can you believe that? I won't get too close to her, but she's she's got sitting about a dozen eggs or so. And let's hope she can make the duration. I've never had geese before. Uh, and maybe somebody can answer in the comments. I believe it's 28 day hatch, just like turkey. Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, I know chickens is 21 because I've hatched chickens all my life from the time I was a kid and quail and pheasants, but I've never had geese. So I think they're a 28 day hatch. Maybe somebody can correct me on that if anybody knows. But I hope that she can make the duration. What she did, she started laying here and she was just laying on top of that tin. So I moved the eggs out and put a it's a, like a medium super bee box and filled it up with hay, put the eggs in and she took to it immediately. So she's setting, she started about April 1st. Let's hope she can make the duration without coyotes or possums or raccoons or whatever getting to her. So I hope that she can make it. Today's video is definitely off subject of honeybees. 
Uh, as you know, we did a, uh, we went to the North Georgia mountains today and dug ramps and we have me and my friend Doug Huber, my neighbor lives down the road from me. Uh, give a shout out to him. Thanks for, for going along and being part of the video. I didn't get him a whole lot in the video like I was wanting to, but, uh, got a couple clips of him digging ramps. <laughs> Shut up. But anyway. Uh, here's a few right here, and there's uh, tons more than this right here. Uh, Try to explain them just a little bit better than what I did up in, in the mountains. These are a spring tonic that here in the North Georgia mountains, they pop up about last of March and about 1st of May. They're pretty much gone. Uh, I have been up there in the early part of Mar or May, and... They're just drying up and dying, turning yellow. So, so like right now here in North Georgia Mountains is prime time. They're extremely hard to find. Unless somebody leads you in on where they're at, they're about impossible to find. Even the, the patch as big as that. That patch was probably, I wouldn't be afraid to say 10 acres big or, or bigger. I, I'm, I'm probably understating it. It was huge. It was, it was bigger than, I got six acres here total that we use with the B lot and it was at least double or triple that so I, I don't know it was huge I've never seen a patch of ramps like that in my entire life uh, but it does it took about an hour and a half to get there and it was only like 22 miles away so it's a uh, extremely hard to get to and hopefully in your area you can find some of these a lot of people that dig these know exactly where to go so, um, th they're kind of like a wild leak, like I explained a little bit in the video. <clears throat> they're extremely pungent. Uh, I I'm a big believer in herbs and medicinal herbs and such. Uh, don't want to say too much on that subject because I know uh, you can get demonetized for, for staying, saying stuff that you make claims on this and that. But I'm a big believer in doing things natural if you can. And with medicinal herbs, uh, as some of you may may know or may not know, I grow uh, what's called comfrey, and it's just actually just popping through the ground right now. I have several patches spread out throughout the yard. This will get about three foot high and spread out, and it's it's a uh, it's used for uh, a skin healer. It's a uh, it's it's a very very good herb. It's probably it's the best plant I know. It's called comfrey, C-O-M-F-R-E-Y. Uh, you can look it up on the internet. Uh, I get mine from a guy named Coe's Comfrey, C-O-E, Comfrey. <laughs> He's in the Nantahala area in uh, North Carolina. So look him up. He'll s send you some crowns and get you started in them. Uh, uh, these are. Uh, I think a Russian variety called a Bach 4, I believe. There's a Bach 4 and a Bach 14, and I, I can't remember. I think these are 4. I could be wrong. But these are, uh, these won't seed. So they're, so they're not evasive. Uh, they, they only expand through roots. So you can't have like excess seeds that'll transfer to uncontrollable, uh, plants the, so these 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 do very well these aren't bad but anyway um, if, you, if you get a chance to get some of these get them and uh, they're a very good skin healer they're almost like an aloe vera gel inside that uh it if you have like a skin abrasion bee stings uh these are very good for bee stings break off a little chunk of it rub it on your bee sting it, you wouldn't believe how well it will heal and take down the swelling of that, the bee sting. So uh, give it a try. If you can grow some of this, Comfrey, C-O-M-F-R-E-Y. Check out Coe's Comfrey, Nantahala, North Carolina. <laughs> With my chickens, it's like an Easter egg hunt. Now, the bad thing about that is you gotta look for them. The nests are everywhere. And if you don't get to them soon enough, you have one of these critters right here 
take over the nest and they will not give it up. This is one of our game hens that we like to use in the bee yard. And if you, if you, uh, if you don't find a nest and it gets like 10 or 12 eggs, these little hens right here will take over and they will, they will hatch out. And they're not nice at all. These things are extremely aggressive <laughs> birds, but they are extremely good uh, setting hens. If you want something that sets, and uh, their eggs are very small, so they're but they are a very good eating egg. Uh, the yolk is extremely yellow, but like I say, these things will take over the nest and they will hatch out if you don't find. There's another little nest right there. It's got like three brown eggs. I can, they're probably from my uh, some of my red uh, Rhode Island red chickens, I would think. Now this here, let's see what she got under. I know she's gonna tear my hand up. Look, okay, look at her. She got a pretty good little mix right there. Uh, she's got a few Rhode Island red eggs and some game chicken eggs. They're extremely protective, good mothers. So she will hatch these out and I'll let her hatch them. I'll leave her alone. Okay, let's move on, leave her alone. Here's another one right here. She's taking over. The <laughs> They're extremely protective. She can <laughs> I'm pretty sure she'll destroy my camera. She doesn't look happy, does she? Look at that face. <laughs> she's got a, a nest of eggs she's been on for a while so this will have some more chickens okay we're out to the pond now it's just kind of like a, a little bit different video today like i said uh, we dug the ramps taking around the bee yard uh sometimes i just get an urge to show you some different things some more natural things that people can do and uh, grow their medicinal medicinal herbs uh this is really one of the first feeds that we have done here in the pond this year <clears throat> so what we're, we're trying to get these fish growed out um yes we will harvest some of these fish we've got a lot of bluegill and a lot of young catfish in here that will outgrow this pond if we don't remove some of them and of course tilly's eating the catfish food aren't you but it takes them a while to get accustomed to the feed so they're going to be kind of slow at taking it at first uh, i just bought a bag today at tractor supply and look at the yellow pollen the pollen count here is crazy huge amounts of pollen but there's a lot of fish in here the catfish there's probably hundreds of catfish in this little pond they did a a spawn last year we lost a majority of our fish in this pond um, and really not sure what it was we, we thought maybe it was an oxygen turnover where the it changed from the where it rolls over from the oxygen being in the bottom to the top and we end up losing a lot of fish but the fish it remained uh, catfish channel catfish usually don't breed but they spawn and they had hundreds and hundreds of these little catfish that are now about six inches long six or eight inches long so we're going to try to grow these out and the bluegill as well they did the same thing and we're going to try to harvest a few of these and get them out but uh, usually when you feed they get used to the sound of the, the food hitting the water and they react to it so these have, haven't been trained since last year so They'll be slow at taking the food at first, but it's really crucial, especially in a pond of this size. It's very small. This pond's not even a, it's like a hundred foot long by 40 foot wide, very small. So it, it just can't house very many fish. And um, so you gotta take them out or you'll have just a bunch of teeny tiny fish. But this is just another way if you got an opportunity to grow your own stuff your own food and uh, I just kind of want to touch on that for a second or two okay this is this is just a handful of our honey producers we don't do a lot of honey 
Uh, we do some. Uh, this is just one of our many small stacks of bees that we got. There's four in this bunch right here. I got four on the other side over there, over that direction where that mess is. Uh, I just had to add these supers two days ago. They're a medium eight frame and uh, let them start uh, drawing us out some honey. Some people want us to do some honey videos, so uh, kind of watch out for that. We'll do, there's a there's a dead out of a two frame that we had right here that it actually died out pretty early last year. So uh, we'll stock it up here before too long. These hives are right here are packed really, really heavy with a lot of bees. So it, won't, it shouldn't take them long to fill out these honey supers. And then we'll, we'll add another stack on top of it before too long. There's a, uh, that one little two frame that we had under this shed um, that really needs split. That thing's really strong. I'm surprised it hadn't swarmed yet, if it hasn't already. I've just kind of been leaving it there as an experiment to begin with, and it never did get moved. So it's got a lot of bees in it. But anyway, just wanted to do a little bit on our uh, honeybees before we close out the video. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this today. We went on a ramp hunt. The video's kind of long. Um, I hope you find it interesting enough to watch it from beginning to end. Uh, I just kind of got in a babbling mood of talking about a bunch of stuff and the ramps. Took more than half of the video and then the other half with the chickens and the uh, goosey on the nest and such and stuff like that. Uh, uh, every now and then I like to get on a, something a little bit different than just honeybees. Every now and then. I mean honeybees is 99% of what we do but I am a farmer as well. I raise chickens, goats, and everything. So every now and then I like to show how the progress that they're doing. And uh, I know a lot of people, uh, I have Goosey has a lot of fans. And a lot of people inquire about her and how she's doing. So I thought I would show that. So that's about it for today. Don't forget. Uh, we have tons of packages left. Anybody needs packages? Uh, bee supplies, barnyardbees.com. Don't forget about us. Um, check out our other videos. Don't forget, share our videos, pass them along. And that's about it for today. Don't forget, click on the little bell. You'll be notified of new and upcoming videos. Like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Barnyard Bees.